Okay, don't move to Nashville, Tennessee is what I would tell you if any of these things that we're gonna talk about today are deal breakers. Look, I love living in Middle Tennessee. I love living in Tennessee. I grew up here. It's the best place as far as I'm concerned, but it's not for everyone. There are a lot of things that some people might move here and find that they just don't fit their lifestyle or the things that they like to do. And so it's just good to be aware of those things. So today we're gonna talk about some of the things that you might want to know if you're thinking about moving to Nashville and things that might make you wanna avoid living here Altogether. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my name is Jennifer Gramling. I'm a real estate agent here in Nashville and the surrounding area. I just put out videos trying to get you more familiar with Nashville. If you're thinking about moving here or relocating, this is going to be a great channel for you. We do neighborhood tours, city tours, talk about pros and cons, all the things. So if this is helpful to you, be sure to like this video and subscribe. And like I said, I am an agent in the area. So if you have questions at all about moving here or relocating, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm helping people just like you every day relocate to the area. Got tons of clients who are moving here from out of state. And this is what we do. Absolutely love just helping you find that right place where you belong. So again, call, text, email. You can find all of my contact information in the description. So don't hesitate to reach out. Okay, so let's jump right into what some of these reasons are why you might want to avoid moving to Nashville. The first reason you might want to avoid moving to Nashville is if you love taking public transportation everywhere you go. Now, I will say we do have a bus system in the downtown area. It does extend out to the suburbs, but in a limited amount. So just depending on where you're coming from and what accesses to bus systems, light rails, all those things looks like for you, might depend how you feel about the bus system here. So if you're coming from somewhere with a more limited transit system, then you'll understand. But I did live in Denver for a long time and the bus system there is very, very extensive. So you've almost got a bus stop pickup on every major intersection where you can walk from your house, hop and get on the bus and go downtown to work. There's also light rail systems all in and throughout the suburbs going into downtown Denver. Here, that's not really the case. So there's really just one park and ride for each of the suburbs for the most part. So you've got to drive to that park and ride and then take the bus down. Like I said, there's more stops in and throughout that downtown Nashville area, but as far as getting there from the suburbs, it's gonna be a little bit more tough. Now there is a train that goes from that Mount Juliet, Lebanon area out on that east side, runs kind of along I-40. It runs along this map that you can see right here. And that's gonna take you from Lebanon, Mount Juliet. There's a stop in Hermitage and then it goes all the way into the stop that's just down at the very end of Broadway, right in the heart of downtown Nashville. So if you're coming from those areas, this train could be a good option. Now this train does not run all day long. It has three stops in the morning, and three stops in the evening. So you have to be on one of those train stops in order to take that train. But that is an option if you live out to the east and you wanna avoid the traffic and get into downtown. So if you're looking to take a train, you might wanna look along that Eastern corridor of Mount Juliet, Hermitage, Lebanon. But yes, if you're in the downtown area, there are gonna be some bus stops for you and you will be able to get around in the downtown if you're living in that downtown core. But if you're living out in the suburbs, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. You are gonna to have to drive to the park and Ride, really just one per suburb for the most part. You're gonna have to drive there, get on the bus and go. So it's gonna be up to you whether or not it's worth it to take the bus or to sit in the traffic might be worth it for you to not sit in the traffic, but we are a little bit more limited here as far as our public transportation, our bus system and transit goes. The second reason that you might wanna avoid moving to Nashville is if you're looking for a really low cost for a home. So here, our housing costs have gone up dramatically in the last few years. That's the case really all over the country. For the most part, housing prices have increased, especially since COVID by a significant amount. So I do get a lot of calls from people who say, oh, I wish I had bought five, six years ago. This is probably the case really in any state or city that you're looking in, but our real estate has gone up considerably in the last few years. Our median home price right now in the Nashville area is gonna be about $535,000. So it's still not terrible. That's gonna be in the full Nashville metro area though. So when you get out into some of these other suburbs, especially when you're looking at Williamson County, which a lot of people do call looking for Williamson County, your median home price there right now is going to be 975,000. So with that $975,000 price point, that's actually a hard pill to swallow for some people, but Williamson County is not the only county where you can buy here in the Nashville area. Like I said, 535, is the median price point, but a lot of people just see that Williamson County number. Let me show you some of the other numbers that we have right here as far as some other counties go. If you take a look at Sumner County, which is gonna be Hendersonville, Gallatin, on that northeast side of the lake up there, a really, really great area. Your median home price that you're looking at there 
is 417,000. So considerably less, actually half that or more of Williamson County. If you're looking at the Mount Juliet, Lebanon area, so out in that Wilson County area, also really nice area south of the lake, there you're looking at a median home price of 471,000. Still a lot better than that Williamson County. So if you're looking for some of those lower price points, these are going to be some of the areas where you can look. You can also take a look at Rutherford County, which is going to be further southeast of town. Median home price there is $425. So while we do have some higher priced homes in the area, and again, just to reiterate, that was $535,000 in the Nashville area, in the Nashville metro area, countrywide, the median home price is $363,000. So you are going to have some more expensive priced areas in the Nashville area, but you've also got some more moderately priced in that $400,000 for three of the areas that we just looked at with the median being in the mid 300s for the rest of the country, it doesn't really put us that far ahead of it. But there are obviously particular counties where it is gonna be a lot more expensive, but there are more affordable ones where you can look. And the further that you get out, obviously, typically the less it's going to cost. So if you wanna be in the area, you wanna be closer to Nashville, you can find more affordable areas. You just have to keep looking for them. Right, the third reason you might wanna avoid Nashville is if you hate traffic and road construction. Now I've had this conversation with actually a lot of different clients that have moved here. Our traffic is actually not terrible, especially when you compare it to a lot of other places in the country. But we do have a decent amount of traffic, especially when there's weather and things like that going on, can really bog down traffic. We also have a lot of road construction going on because of the growth. So I'm sure that Nashville did not foresee all of the growth that it saw. I mean, we've just had a boom in growth, which we're also gonna talk about in a little bit, but that has led to a lot of road construction, which can lead to a lot of delays. Eventually, this is gonna be really helpful. We're adding new interchanges. They're adding lanes to streets where they're needed and really just trying to expand those roadways to accommodate all the people that have moved here. But that has led to a backup in traffic and delays. And this is just something that's probably gonna to have to be dealt with for the foreseeable future in order to accommodate that growth here in Nashville. Fourth reason you might wanna avoid Nashville is that it's not really a small town anymore and Nashville is growing a lot. So according to Macro Trends, the population of Nashville in 2023 was about 1.333 million people. Now, this is a lot of growth for a town that was previously pretty small. Over the last four years, we had growth each year somewhere between 1.37% up to 1.84% on the high side during that COVID time. And CNBC estimated that Nashville was increasing by 100 people per day in 2022. I'm not sure if that number is still accurate or where it still lands, but the fact remains that people are moving here for a lot of different reasons. They're moving here for family, taxes, cost of living, politics, jobs. A lot of times I'll have one family move here and then the parents move here and then the other parents move here and then the siblings move here. That's really so common. But the bottom line is that Nashville is growing and it's definitely bigger than it once was. Now to me, it still feels pretty small. I did grow up in East Tennessee, which was a really small town. I did live in Denver for a while though. And so compared to that, it actually feels really small and actually going to the some of those places and thinking about living there feels overwhelming compared to here. So you do still have a lot of small towns and small pockets located in and around Nashville. So if you like that Nashville vibe and you like everything that Middle Tennessee has to offer and you don't wanna be in some of those more congested areas, you can find some of those suburbs that are much smaller. There are several that are more in like the 10 to 15,000 people range that feel a lot more small, but you also have convenient access to get into Nashville. There's actually a lot of towns that I would say would be a really good fit as far as that's concerned where you can still get out and really feel like you're in a small Southern town, but not be in that hustle and bustle of Nashville. So actually that's probably a great idea for a video. So we might have to do that one soon, but yeah, Nashville is growing. There's no avoiding it. It's a conversation that's happening in almost every town across the country, I feel like. But yes, it's a growing area. There's a lot to love about Nashville, so people are moving here. The next reason you might want to avoid Nashville is going to be the weather. You probably saw this one coming, but we can get some wild weather around here. It's actually fairly temperate most of the year, but it can get a little bit temperamental too. We usually only get like one to two cold snaps a winter. The low getting anywhere, probably January is going to be the lowest. If you look here, it's going to be about 28 degrees on average in January. Then it's going to get up into the 32 to 36 averages through the next couple of months, but that's the very, very low. That's gonna be in the evenings and things, but on average, it just doesn't get that cold here in the wintertime. And then in the summertime, you've got a couple of months, you can see where it's 89 degrees, and those 
those are gonna be the stickier months. I did actually test it out last year and kind of kept track of when it was really hot and sticky. And it really was only a couple of months where we had that really hot, sticky weather. And outside of that, it actually feels pretty dry and really nice. I really don't like humidity, but outside of those couple months, two and a half months, it's really just not that sticky here. So if you can deal with it for just a couple of months, turn on your air conditioner. That's gonna suck all the humidity out of the air. It's gonna make it a lot more bearable. Don't walk your dog in the heat of the day and you're probably gonna be fine. You're really only gonna get one to two snows. This past year, we only really had one snow over a couple of different days. Everybody got out of school for a week. It was really, really great. We got to get out of work, relax a little bit, stay home and then go back. So it's enough snow to just enjoy it, but to not be snowed in and freezing cold all year long. So if you want those four seasons, if you wanna be able to enjoy the snow sometimes and the warmer days, you're gonna get a whole mix of that here. It's definitely never boring when it comes to the weather. But if you're looking for that perfectly temperate, always the same temperature, nothing wild going on, then you might wanna avoid Tennessee. All right, coming in at number six and a reason that you might not wanna move to Tennessee and a reason that you might not wanna move to Nashville is if you want your suburbs to be really, really walkable. Now, again, this is kind of like the transit system. If you wanna live in downtown Nashville, there are some really walkable areas. You can live in Germantown, in the Gulch, in 12 South and East Nashville. There's a lot of different places that you can live that are really walkable and you can jump on some transit if you need to or easily pick up an Uber or a cab or whatever you need to do. If you're living out in the suburbs, it's gonna kind of be the same as that transit system. So you're probably going to need a car here. So if you're wanting to live out in the suburbs and not in the city, you're probably gonna need a car. A lot of things are spread out. Depending on the suburb and what we're talking about, there's not gonna be as many bike paths. There's not gonna be as many trails and things just aren't that condensed. Everything is really spread out. So if you're gonna wanna walk to your downtown area or your grocery, unless you purposefully move right next to those things, it's probably going to be quite a hike to get to them. You know, if you want to live close to downtown Franklin, you can do that and walk in. That's definitely doable, but you're going to kind of want to be in that little circle around it in some of those neighborhoods. But once you get further out from there, everything is really spread out. And that rings true for a lot of the suburbs. So it's going to be hard to be somewhere where you're walkable to work, you're walkable to groceries and all those things. It's just not that doable out in the suburbs. So you're definitely gonna wanna have a car. So if you want a place that's really, really walkable, you definitely have to be thinking about living closer in towards that Nashville core center, not really out in the suburbs. Okay, coming in at number seven and one you might've seen coming is gonna be bugs. So no one dislikes bugs more than I do, but even I don't really find it unbearable, but it's something to consider, something to look into. I would come and hang out here, hang out in the summertime outside and see what you think. But there are gonna be some spiders here. There is a season where with stink bugs. Like if you've never seen a stink bug before, they look like these little armored robot guys. And there's a whole season where they're just all over the place. They don't hurt you. They move really slow. They're really easy to get back outside if they make their way into your house, but they are a little bit creepy. There's a whole season with these Japanese beetles that actually look a lot like a ladybug. You would think it was a ladybug if you didn't know any different. And so they'll congregate in all like the warm and bright places outside, like on your deck or patio during this season. So you'll see see those. Like I said, there's going to be spiders. You'll see slugs when it rains. But what I do and what most people do is you just have an exterminator come to your house. They can come every quarter. They spray. They do the thing that they do put out sticky traps. If you're living in Middle Tennessee, there are brown recluses here, but the solution for those is sticky traps. Don't go putting your hand in a cardboard box in the back corner of your attic when you haven't looked in it because they are recluses and those are the places that they like to live are gonna be in those dark, quiet corners. So watch out when you're going through those or, or just don't put things there, that's what I do. But it's really not unbearable. You're also gonna have mosquitoes from time to time, especially if you're somewhere with like a more wet area, body of water that's just kind of still and sitting there and stagnant. But again, these are all things that are treatable. You can treat your yard for mosquitoes. You can treat your house and have it sprayed for all of these other bugs. It's nothing that's not manageable. If you're gonna be sitting out on your back porch and eating a lot, you might either want a screened porch for the summertime or like a bug zapper or something. There's a lot of different solutions, but I personally don't think it's unbearable, but there are bugs here. If you're accustomed to living somewhere with no bugs and you really, really don't like bugs, it's definitely something to think about whether or not you can deal with it. All right, coming in at number eight, if you're traveling a ton for your job, it, this might be something to consider because we do have a smaller airport. So right now there's not gonna be direct flights to every single place that you want to go. If you're looking for a huge international hub, probably not gonna be Nashville's airport. We do have international flights. And if you take a look here, they have just started a whole new construction and expansion project. And they have plans for the expansion of two concourses, a new air freight building, 
terminal roadway improvements and additional upgrades to further enhance the traveler experience. This is a $1.4 billion expansion, and this is going to be phased in the next six years with a scheduled completion of 2028. So on the airport's website, and you can go here and check this out. If the airport is really important to you and you do a lot of commuting, you can go here and check out what's going on here, but they're having concourse A and D improvements. They're going to have extension on those, additional gates, moving walkways additional concessions. They're making improvements to the baggage handling systems. And those improvements have already begun. And we've seen actually a lot of change just in the last year. Improvements that really, really have added so much value and really made it just a better experience flying out of our airport. Our airport is still small enough that it's actually really nice. You can get in and out easily and in and through security pretty quickly, depending on your airline. But they are going to continue expanding that. This is a huge expansion, something that's much needed. Just like our roads and our traffic, we need to be expanding this airport to accommodate a lot of this growth. And that's happening already, which is really, really great, especially for those frequent commuters who need to get in and out and needing to accommodate for all of those flights coming in and out. So as time goes on, I'll be looking out for more and more flights to be added to this airport. So coming in at number nine is gonna be a limited amount of bike lanes. So if you're an avid biker, you're probably gonna wanna pay attention to where you're moving. So I will say we have a decent system in some of the suburbs and in downtown for bikers, cyclists, but in some of the more rural areas, what you'll find if you're not accustomed to living in the South is you've got a lot of side roads that connect you to places. People don't necessarily know that. So they're going to look a little bit like this. So you're going to have windy, curvy roads with no shoulder. So if you get in and throughout, like Brentwood and Franklin have a really extensive bike and running path system that goes either along the roads or on trails throughout the city, but not all the suburbs are going to have that. So you're going to be more relying on using some of those paths that are in the neighborhood. But if you're wanting to cycle long distances, you're probably going to have to go on some of these roads. Now, plenty of cyclists do it. I see them on these side roads. To me, I feel like they're taking their life in their own hands because I just don't trust people to pay enough attention while they're driving to see a cyclist when they come up and over a hill. But again, people do it all the time. But if you're looking for roads with dedicated bike lanes on them where you can go safely bike or some of those pathways that go through, there's gonna be certain suburbs that are gonna be more conducive to that than just anywhere. So if you want help on that, I can kind of help you understand where some of those places are. There's also places like up in Gallatin that has an incredible mountain bike park. So if you like mountain bike, where you can go and do that. There are parks and things that are specifically for that. But if you're looking to do a lot of road cycling, I know a lot of people who move here from some of these other towns and cities really, really enjoy that. So it's just something to keep in mind and look around when you're moving here to make sure that where you're moving, even within the city or around the city, that it's gonna accommodate that outdoor lifestyle. So these are just a lot of the common reasons that I would think that somebody might not wanna move here to this Nashville area, why they might wanna avoid it. There's also a lot of reasons to really love it here in Nashville. I do love it in Tennessee, in Middle Tennessee. It's a great place to live, but again, it's not for everybody. And if you're one of those people, we definitely wanna save you the headache from moving here and finding out that it's not for you. But if you have questions at all about moving here to the area, again, feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to answer any and all of your questions. I've probably heard all of them already. I have a lot of people who are moving here from out of state, just like you have questions, just like you. So I promise you probably can't ask anything that hasn't already been answered by me. So happy to give you all of that information so that you can make the most informed decision that you can when it comes to moving to the area. We have a lot of great more content coming out. We've got more city tours, neighborhood tours, talking about cost of living, all the things. So be sure to subscribe. Please like this video. It helps me out a lot. You subscribe, like the video if it was helpful to you. Reach out to me with any questions. Again, all my contact information is in the description. Happy to answer any and all of your questions. Thanks so much and I'll see you on the next video.